Hi and welcome to episode 57. We are staying at the beach next to Wolby's Bay and one of the best waves in the world. Seeing wildlife through our windscreen, but also getting constantly challenged by the elements. We left the area around Swakamund and head towards Wolby's Bay. To be honest, we had mixed feelings about this place. It kind of felt there shouldn't be a city this big in a desert environment. Wolby's Bay is an important logistical port and one might expect to be just that, a commercial hub. But as we continue driving out, things start to get interesting. Wolby's Bay is protected by a stretch of sand. It creates a lagoon between the city and the rough Atlantic Ocean. The area is a paradise for birds, but also a salt refinery. Thousands of hectares of salt pans separate us from the ocean. It is so weird to drive through these man-made platforms. And sometimes it feels like driving on the ocean. We want to stay in front of the open ocean. And that's why we are getting as out as possible. That's amazing! We are at the moment at Wolby's Bay at Lanky Bay, which is really, really famous for one of the longest tubes. Yeah, I would like to go surfing more, but it's not working at the moment. We are staying for many days here 
experiencing the changing weather and raw nature. It might look cute, but after staying long enough in this coast, one realizes a lonely seal is a death sentence. This coast teaches you to settle with discomfort. This is not new to us. I mean, we live in a Land Rover Defender. But traveling like this also leads to seeing and experiencing extraordinary locations. This is how it is normally in the mornings, super foggy, everything wet and not so appealing actually. Then the sun comes out and it gets really nice, but in the mornings it's just awful. No, and this weather is destroying our car. We will need to treat that and paint them again, but yeah. All of them not looking so great. So the surf is working, but is it way too foggy to go out there yet? If you pedal out or drift out and you're out like 20 30 meters, you will not see the coast, and therefore it's a bit dangerous. And on the other hand, you cannot see the wave coming when you're in the lineup.
So we will wait for a little bit better weather. But definitely is working and in some parts it's big. This area might not get much rain, but it's for sure covering thick fog a lot of the time. The water is really cold due to the Vengela current and the air warm coming from the desert, getting the fog stuck at the coastline. The conditions are rough, unforgiving, a challenge that turns out to be completely different than planned. I'm just back from the surf, showered. There was a German couple that went in with me. I met them at the beach as I went down and checked the waves. It was quite big and the wave moves down the beach really, really fast. So it's really tough to get into the wave. And especially with the current that drags you down um, the coast, it's like from the outside they said, it's like we are on a bicycle riding past. That's how fast you move. So it's really difficult to know where you need to be to get a wave. And yeah, going out was especially challenging because the shore break is quite vicious. We went down way too far. We got told the section where there's close at, you should not go there. And due to the fact that there was still fog and you were moving so fast, we didn't really know where we were. So we ended up in the section where there is close out. And yeah, it's vicious, it's difficult to get out. But yeah, in the end we managed to both get out. Uh, for me it was enough. But uh, he, Burkhardt, went in again. It was not worth it. The conditions are not quite there. And I think none of us has the skill to surf this spot in these conditions. Just cooking. <laughs> this is the situation right now. <laughs> we are in an island. <laughs> now we know how all those skeletons and the seals get really, really, really down. We are on the move this morning. The idea is to go to Sandwich Harbor today. Um, low tide is at 1 p.m. So we will start now. I think it's 9.30. Yeah, 9.30. So we can spend the whole day around Sandwich Harbor. To be able to go, you need to get a permit. Uh, but it's very easy to get in. So 
we just did that yesterday. So we are off today. The stretch towards Sandwich Harbour is famous as one can drive between vertical dunes and the ocean. But only at low tide, when there is enough space to cross. We're a bit early. <laughs> it's 10.30, so yeah, maybe we should have waited a bit. Why yeah. we need to also come out again? Yeah, yeah, we need to come out again. Ocean crossing. We decide to stop and change drivers. I want to drive as well, and also Kai can get the drone out and shoot these in the same place. It is thrilling and to be honest, in some parts, plain scary. The path is tricky in many ways, depending on the softness of the sand and the number of vehicles that drive in front of us, the tracks get deeper and as the path increases in inclination, getting out of it with a three-ton vehicle is just a matter of time. One of the things that Kai always tells me, if you want to drive a Defender, you should be able to get it out of trouble yourself. And even though it's going to take time and stress, this is part of the learning. We find us a little bit stuck here at the famous part of the Skeleton Coast. Luckily, it's early in the morning and the tide is going down and then up. So we have time, but still we need to get the car unstuck. Every time we try to get forward, we move a little bit further down. So let's see how it goes. At the moment we are leaving the tires a little bit more down and then it should work.
We're at this point where you actually need to go over the dunes to continue and in my opinion we are too heavy to do that. I think there's a lot of rolling <laughs> over potential so I don't know I would not do it but I don't know Kai if he wants to try it. I says it's okay let's see it's a car there maybe wait for the car Yeah, he goes really here and then takes that path, like goes 45 degrees and yeah, then... Yeah, I think they make that to have fun. I think the lower one would also be possible. I think you will get stuck there. I mean, and look then, at those ones up there. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. But if you stay there, you cannot get out because you don't have any hill. That's why they actually... <laughs> do you still want to do it? But maybe in my assessment, fear assessment, it's wrong. This is the difficult part. You can see it's really like 45 degrees and you need speed and for sure not three tons. You can see how he's going to the side. See? It's very dangerous for us because we could actually slide here to the side. We went from Wavis Bay towards the Sandwich Harbor and that's the point further south we can go. Um, we thought like we can go more down here, but we are actually on top of that laguni thing. And um, yeah, on the right side inland there are huge sand dunes, which are too steep for us to pass. Some of the tour guys go up there. We cannot, um, yeah, so we're thinking about what to do if we go back or if we go up the dune and roll the car down. <laughs> um, yeah, not sure yet. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> Gonna go forward. So use the time wisely. I'm done. No, please continue. <laughs> Actually, you will remove a lot. We did feel a bit disappointed we could not do the tall dunes. That's why, when we saw a flutter entry, we went straight for it.
I guess traveling like this expands your comfort zone. Sometimes crossing your boundaries doesn't turn as planned. But a stepping to the unknown might teach you more about yourself and what you're capable of, and like anything else. Thank you for watching and see you soon.